Uh, I've talked about this a lot, but I'll say it again. Wake up. If you want to be alert, get as much bright light in your eyes as you can. Never look at any light that's so bright that it's, it's painful to look at because it can damage the eyes, but ideally sunlight. So if you wake up at 4 a.m. and the sun isn't out, turn on bright lights if you want to be awake. But if the sun is out or one and once the sun is out, go outside without sunglasses. And yes, you have to go outside. You can't do this through a window or through a car windshield and get some bright light in your eyes. It doesn't have to be beaming directly at you, but indirectly or in the general direction of the sun is good. Wearing corrective lenses or contacts is fine. Even if they have UV filters, that light can get to the neurons in the eye that trigger a whole set of processes. It sets in motion a big increase in cortisol but it's a healthy increase that leads to alertness triggers an increase in body temperature which is important for waking up there's a whole set of processes there and it sets a timer on melatonin release so that about 16 hours later your melatonin levels are going to go up how long to view light well anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes depending on how bright it is if you wake up and you go outside and it's 9 a.m and it's beaming bright light and you're on a snow field it probably take 30 seconds if you're in the depths of uh, you know UK winter and you go outside and there's a lot of cloud cover, maybe 20 minutes. You can check your phone out there. You can do things out. You can take your coffee out there, but you have to get outside. The, the window filtration is a serious Do you issue. do that every day? I do it every day. Every day. And I don't get enough sun off my porch behind us. So I will walk up the street. My neighbor's on you know, there and I, you know, I walk up there with my coffee. I often bring my journal and just kind of write down whatever comes to mind. Get some sun in my eyes, um, you know, and you do that most days. If you miss a day, no big deal. If you miss two days, you're starting to drift. And when I say drift, I mean that these neurochemical systems are going to start to, to, to get out of sync with the daylight cycle. That morning light pulse is, I say light pulse, light viewing is immensely important. Um, a drift in cortisol peak toward the later day is a signature of depression and waking up at three, four in the morning and not being able to fall back asleep. Signature of depression. A drift in cortisol yeah. peak. So you'll, you'll get that drift if you don't get that light exposure early in the morning. That's right. And and so you're, you're going to get a pulse in a, a big increase in cortisol at some point every 24 hours. You want that to be early in the day and when you want to be alert. Now, some people wake up at 10 a.m., right? I've got a friend uh, who's, a, I consider, a, you know, he's kind of a mentee of mine and, and he likes to sleep in and he's a teenager, he sleeps in. So he's gonna wake up at 10, but then he goes outside and he gets his sunlight. If you wake up at five, again, if the sun isn't out, turn on as many bright lights as possible and then go outside once the sun is out. Why? Because early in the day, you need a lot of bright light in order to trigger this mechanism. Now, the second tool is that later in the day, as the sun is heading down, it doesn't have to just be crossing the horizon. You also want to get light into your eyes for the following reason. It adjusts the sensitivity of the what we call the retinal photoreceptors, the cells in the eye that detect light, and makes it such that nighttime light that you're going to get at 8 or 9 p.m. won't have as severe an effect on reducing melatonin. So I consider it kind of your Netflix inoculation. Because when you're viewing screens at night or you're, unless you have built your house so that all the lights are red lights and they're really dim, most people use artificial lighting at night and that can mess up sleep. So if you're really extreme about it, you, you know, you make your house a cave at night. I don't do that. Okay. I tend to dim the lights. I don't like bright lights after about seven or 8 PM, but getting that afternoon light is great because it sends two signals to your brain and body about where you are in time, meaning time is the rotation of the earth. So you get your cortisol pulse early, melatonin comes on. People who start waking up late or super early and they spend all their time on their phone, it's not enough light to trigger these mechanisms early in the day. But at night, retinal sensitivity is such that if you are looking at your phone on full screen brightness or you have a lot of artificial lights on, you're going to suppress melatonin and you start disrupting these mechanisms. So bright light early, bright light in the afternoon, minimize bright light exposure in the evening, all colors and flavors of light. It's not just blue light. This has got to be responsible for a lot of sleep issues. A ton of sleep issues. A lot of people have written to me. I would say thousands of people have written to me and said, I get morning sunlight every morning as best I can, 10 to 30 minutes, and my sleep issues are resolved. Now, some people do that and their sleep issues are not still resolved. I would say, then you look to how late in the day are they ingesting caffeine? Do they have a kind of rumination issue? Are they eating enough? I mean, one thing that is not commonly discussed is that in order to sleep well, you have to eat enough, not necessarily right before sleep. And nowadays there's a big movement towards don't eat within two hours of sleep. And 
I think it's generally a good idea. Sometimes I obey that, sometimes I don't. But if you don't have enough starch in your system, sorry, low carb keto people, but if you're gonna have sleep issues unless you do other things to offset that, because starches and the whole association with the tryptophan system and the serotonin system are part of the calming system. There's a reason why we reach for certain so-called comfort foods when we're stressed is because they increase the release of serotonin and they blunt cortisol. So if you're just a bag of cortisol and adrenaline and you're fasting a long period of time, it's very hard to, st to get quality sleep. Now, and I, I think intermittent fasting is terrific. Sachin Panda, who really is the one that kind of popularized this at the scientific level anyway, is a, is a friend and colleague of mine, does beautiful work. But you know, you need to figure out how much to eat and when to eat and what to eat in a way that still allows you to transition to sleep. So I would say the light viewing early, the light viewing in the afternoon, avoid bright lights of all colors. Blue blockers are fine if you like them, but it's not just blue light that can mess up these circadian clock systems, any bright light any bright light will do that because of the spectrum of, of wavelengths of light that the neurons that are responsible for this respond to. 